the Smoky Mouse occurs in Victoria, um, where it's listed as endangered. Um, we've had a few records from the ACT in the Brindabellas, and it's endangered in the ACT. And we've had a small handful of records in New South Wales from 1993, when it was first discovered in New South Wales, and it's listed as critically endangered in New South Wales. They occur on these little sort of rocky ridges where there is a dense understory of heathy plants um, in the dry forest. There are also a lot of acacias. This is one of the acacias, the, the seeds the, the smoky mice will eat. Um, they eat a lot of flowers, so they eat nectar from the flowers. So when we go to trap the smoky mice and other small mammals, we use what we call an Elliot trap, which is a little metal folding trap. Um, and so it's like a little box that has a, a little trip plate inside that when the mouse walks onto the plate, the door closes. So I'm just going to do a transect here, putting the traps about 10 to 15 metres apart, across through the, the likeliest looking habitat on top of the ridge. I'll do two rows, I'll do 1 to 12 on the first row and then 13 to 25, um, 20 metres down the hill. Good, that's the three species I expected. So it's a marsupial. Some people call them marsupial mice, but they're actually related to quolls and Tasmanian devils. They're in the same family. Ah, it's a smoky mouse. Maybe they like the warmer aspect. Should be 38 grams. Which is, yeah, that's a non-breeding female set up 30 study sites and on those 30 study sites we've found them on 25 of those sites um, over the, since 1994. At the moment I'm only finding them on two of the sites um, of those 30 sites. I wouldn't be confident in saying there's more than 100 individuals in this area. They're in such low numbers. Nationally, oh, it would be guessing, it would be a real guess but less than a thousand to two thousand. Feral cats are one of the m major problems for the smoky mouse. So we've been starting to trap feral cats, but I'm still picking up cats on the cameras that I use for monitoring the mice. So we're proposing to increase the cat control up to 90 days a year with a, a cat control contractor. All the plants that the smoky mouse need, the, the peas, the acacias, are very susceptible to Phytophthora. Phytophthora is like a root rock fungus, cinnamon fungus, that kills plants, it can kill trees. And we can go to sites now and see swathes of dead plants where the Phytophthora has come through. Because we're, there's only a handful of sites that we know that mice now exist of, on, on the whole 25 where they used to be, is to start a captive breeding program so that we can build up numbers and put them back on the sites from which they've disappeared in the hope that we can build up the whole meta population to a, a point that they can sustain within the whole area again with increased cat control. One thing you can do, be very careful about cleaning your boots before you walk into bushland areas, taking the mud off them because the Phytophthora spores can be in the mud on your boots and you can inadvertently transfer it from one place to another. How many people know there's a native mouse, a critically endangered native mouse? It's a beautiful little creature that'll sit in your hand, look at you and go, well, I'm not very common and I'm about to blink out, what are you going to do about it? They're so unique, they're native to Australia, they're in such low numbers 
and they're just precious little creatures and we have an obligation, I think, to make sure that they survive. With our SOS programs, we're hoping to make them survive for the next 100 years. Well, if we want to make Smoky Mouse survive for the next 100 years, we've got to do quite a lot to help it.